Well, everyone, the Samsung Galaxy A55 has been out for a little bit of time now, and I want to go and make a full tutorial, a complete beginner's guide on exactly how to use this particular phone. It's a very good phone. It has a lot of cool features and stuff built in within it. So we're going to take a look through, you know, that throughout this whole entire video. If you want to buy any cases or screen protectors or anything for this particular phone, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there, and you can also support the channel at the exact same time. Now, starting off with the outside, you're basically getting your massive display. It's a dynamic, it's an OLED display, and it's a very nice display at that. It's not too shabby, 120 hertz display. You also have your whole points display at the very top, a little bit of bezel, but it is a very good, you know, well-built phone for the most part. The sides of this phone feel very, very premium as well. It is a very, very good, you know, built phone. It has these aluminum sides, which feel very good. The top, you have a few things, a microphone hole and a SIM card jack tool, which we'll talk about in a second. The sides don't have much else going on. On the bottom, you have your USB type C port. A speaker go right here. On the right side, you have your power buttons and your volume down and up buttons at the same time. On the back side, you basically have your back, which feels pretty good, although it's built, I think, out of plastic. You have your triple camera setup right here as well, which is interesting. And overall, it is a pretty good feeling phone. There's nothing really too bad or too crazy about it. And I can see that how this phone would age pretty well throughout the next couple of years. The next big thing you want to keep in mind is actually ejecting your SIM card tray. So if you want to do that, what you can do is you can go ahead and basically grab your phone and bring it to the top of the portion just like this. The other thing you're going to want to do is you want to go and grab your SIM card eject tool. Now the SIM card eject tool looks something like this. It's like a little needle thing with a thing through it. All you're going to want to do is you want to go and put this specific needle inside of this particular hole right here. So what you can do is you can go and slide this thing just like this, just like in, just like so. And what you can do is you can go ahead and grab this thing and pry it out. Now, one side is for your micro SD card slot, the other one is for a SIM card tray. So it's a dual purpose. You can go and input a SIM card tray on one side and then a micro SD card on the other. And then whenever you're ready, you can be very careful. You wanna go and input this particular thing back in just as you saw before. So go ahead and slide this thing just like how you got it. And then you can see once it's put in fully in place, you are good to go. This thing is flush at the very top and that's really all you're going to have to do there. So whenever you're ready, you can boot up your phone again and then it'll come back into its main panel. So now when you're ready, you can come into your home screen or your lock screen. So there's two ways to get into it. You can either double tap the front display to turn it on or you can click on the power button. And when you come into your home screen or your lock screen, this is what it's going to look like every single time. You're going to have your status bar at the very top, your clock and all these things here. And then notifications that might be popping up here too. So you can see all sorts of notifications that may come up here. So you can just see those. At the bottom, you have your toggles, your home, your phone, and your uh, camera, but these can be customizable. And then you can swipe up to get into your home screen. But before we get there, if you actually hold down on your lock screen like this, you can get into your editing panel. So nowadays, you can actually edit up your particular panel, your front panel, which is actually very cool. And I do enjoy doing this a lot. So what you can do is you can add widgets to your front home screen by clicking right into here. You can change your date and time options right here too. You can change your applications. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can basically do here. And once again, that's another really awesome thing that you basically have the capability of doing. And you can even click on the bottom right here and you can change your applications down here too. So that's another really cool thing that you have the ability of doing. So whenever you're ready, you can just click up or you can click done up here and then get into your lock screen like you normally would before. Now, whenever you're ready, you can swipe up and get back into your home screen. So with your home screen, you have a lot of cool stuff here. So for one, the layout is almost always going to be the same. So the status bar is at the very top. So you have your time at the top left, you have your battery, all that other icons in the very top right, and you have your whole points in the top center. Now the rest of this home screen, you can really do whatever you want to with it. So for one, you have your status bar, your search engine, all this other stuff right here. What you can also do is you can move this stuff around. So if you want to, you can go and hold down on this particular application here. You can bring it up, you can bring it down, you can bring it, move it wherever you want to. So that's a really cool thing that you have the ability of doing there. You can also grab your search bar and move it around. You can also go and drag apps and all this stuff around too, but you can also move them to different pages. If I want to grab the store icon, I can grab it and bring it to a different page. And I can go and drag it again and bring it back to the other page if I want to. You can move around all these apps, but notice how the dock always stays the same. The dock is at the bottom, so you can move and bring in, you know, applications to your dock and bring them out, and those will the dock will always stay there, which is really cool. At the bottom, you have either a status bar, your nav bar, or your gesture bar. So here I have my nav bar, but you can also change it to a gesture bar if you want to, which will just use the gestures. But for me, I use the buttons, which is pretty much the same thing. So for gestures, you just swipe up and you just swipe up to the side if you want to get into your gestures. You also have a back button right here as well. 
and that kind of covers it up here. Now, swiping down from the top, you'll see your status bar. So this is where you can see some notifications and a lot of other stuff going on with your phone too. So you can look at a notification. You can also swipe out of it just by swiping out through here. And if you don't want any notifications, you can just click that clear button. You'll see your a media control panel or control center here. But you can also swipe down one more time to get into all the different things that you have inside of your control panel. So here you have a lot of different options. You'll have your time up here. At the very top right, you'll have a power icon, settings icon, as well as a pencil icon right here. You will have all your toggles that you can mess around with right here. So what you can do is you can just go through these different pages and there is a lot of stuff that you can swipe through, which again is very cool. And you can delete toggles or add toggles by clicking on that pencil icon right here and you can drag and drop them right into here. Now on top of that, you have your brightness toggle right here, which is another cool thing. You can go through and just basically increase or decrease your brightness. At the very bottom, you have your device panel and devices that you can kind of mess around with as well. If you want to go back home, you can click the home button or swipe up if you have the gestures. If you swipe up from here, you will see all the applications that you have inside of your Android phone. So every app that you download may not come inside of your main panels right here, but they will always, most of the time, come inside of your application library, which is right here. So this is something that's actually very cool because you can actually just go through and essentially get access to all your applications. You can download them, you can see them as you normally would. And that's another really cool thing that you have the ability of doing. So personally for me, I like doing this. I love having all these applications right here. And that is another nice thing that I have the ability of doing. Now for the core functionality of your phone, if you wanna send phone calls or make phone calls, you can always open up the phone call application here. You can go and call people, whatever you want. If you have their phone number, you can add them as contacts in here too. Going back home, you can always get into your messages panel. If you wanna text somebody or whatever, you can always go inside of Google Messages and you can always message people whatever way you want to. So it's another option you have. And then if you wanna access the internet, here's the internet browser, a camera if you wanna go and take photos, and then Google Play Store if you wanna go and download applications and stuff through your Play Store. Now, the Recents panel down here at the bottom will show you all the previous applications that you just opened. So you can see if I click here, all these apps that I just opened, the Google Play Store, the camera, the internet browser, the messages, all this stuff already opens up here. And that is actually a really cool thing, the option that you basically have here, which is really, really cool. If you wanna go back home, you can go and click back home. Now, finally, the other thing I wanna show you is basically when it comes down to your settings application. So come inside of your app you know, drawer right here. You wanna go and click on settings, which is right there. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna go and basically scroll down and just get used to all these particular, you know, particular toggles. If you ever have any questions or you're stuck somewhere, you can always click on the search bar, which is right here. And you can always search for your particular you know, applications. If you're having issues with something, you can always click search and search for the things that you're looking for. Now, what you can always do is you can always find the particular things that you wanna go and search for in general. So you have your connections, connected devices, sounds and vibrations, display, battery, you know, lock screen, you know, always on display. You have your Google account. There's a lot of stuff that I'd recommend kind of getting used to. But the big thing is the software updates. So click on software update right here. And what I'd recommend doing is every once in a while, just going through and downloading and installing the latest update that you have. So if there's an update that's available, I would probably recommend installing it because that can go ahead and basically alleviate a lot of issues that you may have and it will allow you to get the most you know, up-to-date software on your phone and make your phone as updated as possible, which can actually fix a lot of issues that you may have. So you can always just go and click back home and then you're good to go. So at a high level, that's basically how to use your Samsung Galaxy A55. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.